Good afternoon. My name is Seth Butner, and I have the honor to serve as this year's president of the Rotary Club of Oakland. Founded in 1908, the Rotary Club of Oakland is the third oldest Rotary Club of some 35,000 Rotary Clubs throughout the world. We are a community of 300 men and women from all walks of Oakland's civic, commercial, and community life committed to Rotary's motto, service above self. I'd like to welcome you to all to our 5,307th club meeting. For over 111 years, we have welcomed Rotarians and guests from around the world to our club meetings. We continue to do so virtually. So if you're visiting Rotarian, or if you're a guest of a Rotarian, please let us know by typing your name and the name of your club into the chat box located at the center bottom of the screen as indicated by the red arrow on the slide you view, view now. By doing so, we will be able to recognize you later in this meeting. Also, we recommend that all participants view this Zoom meeting by clicking the speaker view button located in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. And if you have comments throughout the meeting or questions for the speaker, please use the chat button at the bottom of the screen for that as well. And now for our thought for the day, new member Rotarian, Tommy Edwards. Thank you, Seth. Good morning, everyone. The thought for today is mental health. With most of us, if not all of us, working from home during the COVID environment, um, some of us may be working at home for the first time, like I am, and I can't stand it. It <laughs> rattles my mind. So uh, here's a few tips to get along. Take frequent breaks if you can. Be sure to take a lunch break, preferably for about one hour. And if you have some time, drive around. We have lovely vistas. You wanna get outside, take a little mental break. Also, last but not least, please do not try to do everything all at once. We're only human after all. So with that, I just wanna say one more thing to leave you with. Vote early and vote often. Thank you very much. Thank you for that thought of the day, Tommy. Because we'll, we want to remain grounded and focused, we begin our meetings by reciting our vision, which is, together we see the world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. I hope you enjoyed our last two meetings feature, that featured our Congresswoman Barbara Lee and our COVID inequity panel that we did in coordination with the San Francisco Federal Reserve Bank. Well, I certainly did. I'd like to thank the David Stein and our speakers committee for providing us with such wonderful speakers and helping me begin to fulfill my first goal for 2021, which was high profile speakers to make our meetings the must attend event of the week. And we have uh, more to come in the coming weeks. So spread the word to all your Rotarians and friends to come to our Civic Thursday meetings, catch a great speaker, and get involved with Rotary where service above self exists. This week, uh, we have a presentation from the Rotary Foundation co-chairs, Joe Garaka and Leanne Alameda, a homeless committee update by past president Peter Saris, and an interesting speaker that I think you that you'll enjoy. So let's uh, get started with the meeting with our first meeting sponsor of the year. Our business development committee brings you Rotarian Elita Scola. Elita. Thank you. Thank you, President Sess, my fellow Rotarians. Thank you for this opportunity to talk to you. I own Galleria Scola and as a proud member of Rotary, invite all of you to come and visit whenever you can. We have lots of hand sanitizer, masks, and whatever you need to come and visit us. We do custom framing and restoration and can pick up whatever it is you need to have framed. Come and look at your walls, keep a safe distance. But if you don't want to come down there, we have extra, extra pickup and delivery services for free from during this period of time. 
this presentation is going to be very short. It's just a couple of minutes. And really it's, it's just an expression of gratitude to all of you who have patronized my business and with whom I do business. I am truly and completely grateful from the bottom of my heart. Actually it makes me kind of misty really. But I'm going to read a list of those people who, with whom I do business and who have done business with me because, you know, especially for new Rotarians, if you have any questions about the commitment and loyalty and loving care of the people with whom you are in the club, this should be the affirmation that you might need. So the following people do business with me. Thank you. Roberta Abel, Dan Altimus, Barbara Beery, Carla Betts, Allison Bliss, James Bosnecker and Linda, Robert Breaker, Iris Brody Lopez, Michael Bruck, Sess Butner, thank you, Sess, President, Sean Callum, Phil Campbell, John Cullen, Catherine Campbell, Paul Cummings, Rosemary Darden, John Dolby, David Douglas, Richard Draper, Gudrun Dibdahl, John, and John Gressley, Gary Flaxman, Julie Fox, Karen Friedman, Brad Gill, Joe Goralka, Shannon Hackley, Rich Halleck, Linda Hamilton, uh, Cynthia Harris, CJ Hirschfield, Ed Jellen, Anne Marie Jones, Anna Marie Jones, sorry, Anna Marie, George Kostantopoulos, Robert Kidd, Isaac Cost Reed, Tom Limon, Jillian Lowe Kearns, Joycey Mack, Danny Mai, John Malik, Sean Marks, Jack McAvoy, Julie McRae, Michael Malone. Mark Miller, Yuri Mock, uh, Fred Morris, Steve Nichols, Laura Padilla Marcus, Alex Polson, Alex Polson, Alex Polson, John Protopapas, D David Robb, Rini Rashka, Ken Richardson, Marianne Robison, Mary Rudzer, D Dana Sack, Diane Schaefer, Margot Seligman, Peter Sheris, Kathy Sims, Rob Spencer, uh, David Stein. Ruth Stroop, Giovanna Tanzillo, Dudley Thompson, Peter Turner, Cedric Titus, Gail Ukima, Jane Williams, uh, Leslie Weaver, Winter Williams, and Wendy Wilrich. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The following people I do business with, and this list, shockingly, is smaller. I wish it was longer. I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of more ways <laughs> to do business with these guys. Allison Bliss, Carla Betts, puts gas in my car. Iris Brody Lopez, Barbara Beery, David Douglas, parks my car, Brad Gill, Shannon Hackley has helped me with my signage, Robert Kidd has helped me scramble out of legal questions, Christian Lace took me to Bhutan, Julie McRae is a, is a constant supporter, Teresa Mason, Alex Poulsen, Rini Rashka, Randy Reed, David Stein, Giovanna Tanzillo, uh, Dudley Thompson, Cedric Titus, and Jane Williams, for whom all I would like to ring the bell and say once again, <laughs> bottom of my heart, thank you, one and all. Ring the bell, did I hear? Uh, very good, uh, Helena. Uh, so that's our first meeting sponsor. From time to time, we'll have meeting sponsor for the sponsor of this meeting, and I thank you so much for that, Helena. Now, past District Governor Ed Jellin. Do we have any visiting Rotarians or guests? Well, President Sess, here is the tablet that I use, the legal tablet, to write down the names of our visitors and guests. Uh, sadly and unfortunately, today I don't have any names on the tablet, so uh, <clears throat> maybe, excuse me, maybe next uh, week we'll do better. But uh, today, no announcements. Thank That's you. That's all right. Thank you so much for doing that work for us. Uh, as we go into Labor Day weekend, traditionally the last week of summer, Rotarian Keith, you rotity, will bring us the special message about the Labor Day. Thank you, uh, President Butner and Executive Director Williams for asking me um, to make a few comments about why we celebrate Labor Day. Today, I'm wearing a different hat. Um, so the first Labor Day in the United States was on September 5th, 1882 in New York City. Actually, it was a general strike by all workers protesting their deplorable working conditions, child labor, the 12 hour work day, seven day work week, and no breaks. Tens of thousands of workers participated in this one day general strike. 
Thereafter, numerous states, Oregon the first, and later others passed legislation to celebrate Labor Day as a holiday. Not until June 1894 did Congress pass and President Cleveland sign into law making the first Monday in September a national holiday. What moved Congress and President Cleveland? The Pullman Palace Car Company, maker of the Pullman Railroad passenger cars, cut wages of its workers. This led workers to join the American Railway Union. The leader of the union was Eugene Debs. The Pullman workers went on strike and Pullman fired all the striking workers and hired permanent replacement workers. Then Debs called a strike by all of the American Railway workers. 125,000 union members went on strike. President Cleveland sent in the military and federal marshals. He claimed the strike interfered with mail delivery. At least 13 workers were killed and more than 50 were injured. 1894 was a midterm election year. The national holiday recognizing organized labor was an attempt to appease workers. However, the congressional and presidential maneuver did not work. The Democratic controlled House and Senate were both lost. The middle class in the United States was born from the labor movement. However, some are left behind. Most of these are black, brown, and other people of color. In 1968, Reverend Martin Luther King went to Memphis, Tennessee to join and support the striking city sanitation workers. The black sanitation workers collected the garbage. They were seeking recognition for dignity and worker safety. Reverend King paid the ultimate price for his support. Today, each and every one of us, whether a union member or not, enjoys the benefits of the hard work of organized labor the 40-hour work week, weekends, child labor laws, anti-discrimination laws, social security, health care, Medicare, environmental and health and safety laws, minimum wage, and recently, actions to enact living wages at the state and local levels, family leave, paid sick leave, workers' compensation, unemployment. Oakland has deep union relationships in history. Oakland schools, in 1890, nine men and one woman, all classified school employees, met to form what would later be known as the California School Employees Association. Kaiser Permanente, Kaiser Industries with its mostly unionized workforce in construction, shipyards, and steel, together in 1945 created the Pipe Kaiser Permanente Health Plan. The Port of Oakland, a workforce represented by unions including the International Longshoremen and Warehousemen, the Teamsters, the Laborers, the Service Employees, and the Seafarers. Oakland Rotary's founding president, Frank Bilger, owned and operated the Bilger Quarry in Rock Ridge and the Oakland Paving Company. His employees were members of the operating engineers the Teamsters, and the laborers. Complacency and the social economic divide of the haves, blaming the have-nots, has allowed for today's enormous social and economic disparities. Today, many families struggle just to make ends meet in this predominantly service economy. The fastest growing segment of the U.S. adult population is the working poor. The struggle and the pursuit for social and economic justice must continue. Labor unions, as with Rotary, are about service above self. We struggle together to make this world a better place for all. Have a safe and happy Labor Day. Well, thank you so much for that uh, wonderful recitation about where we got Labor Day from. We appreciate that. And uh, Rotarian Tom Lamone, I think you have an announcement from the High Adventure Committee. Yes, thank you, President Sess. Um, I just want to remind all of our members and any guests that are watching what the High Adventure Committee does. Uh, I'm the co-chair along with Mark Rosen. Uh, the High Adventure Committee provides additional opportunities for connection 
through recreation outside of club and committee activities for our members, friends, and family. So uh, if we can go to the next slide. So upcoming, we, just as Rotary's had to, our club's had to shift its platform, High Adventure has had to shift our platform too. We had plans for bike rides, uh, backpacking trips, uh, soccer games, football games, basketball, um, basketball games and baseball games this year, but that's all shifted. So right now we're just trying to get people outdoors. And so with that, on September 12th, we have a hike at Brionis Regional Park. Start time is at 8.30. It's a medium level hike. Dogs are okay, but need to be kept on leash. And you should be done around 12 noon. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, Mark Rosen has identified a really nice, uh, a really nice meeting spot. It's on the north side of Brionis, uh, on, towards Martinez. Um, next slide, please. So you can sign up on the Rotary website. Everything is, we try to be as safe as possible. Um, limit the number of people to 12 people, social distancing, masks are required. Um, and we got to acknowledge Robert Kidd for really taking the lead and continuing uh, our activities around hiking. And so, you know, he's a great leader and always picks the best, uh, the best places to go locally. Uh, friends are also welcome, but you know, you need to be sure to sign up on the Rotary website. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, alternatively, uh, cycling. So Mark Rosen, along with Steve Blair, Joe Gralka, Mike Malone, Fred Morris, Peter Sheris, and Yvette Davis have, have been meeting almost weekly uh, on Sunday mornings. So this Sunday they have a meeting over in Orinda. The parts they're gonna be doing part of the Three Bears Loop. And they make the side trip to Lafayette to hit a donut shop along the way. So you can always meet them there if you want. But anyways, <laughs> that's uh, what High Adventure is up to. Uh, so next slide, please. So please come join us, High Adventure. Uh, you can also reach us at highadventure at outlook.com. And if I could just briefly just thank uh, Coach Beam for being here. You know, I was one of those kids running the track at Skyline in the late 80s played lacrosse so I took some hits from your players from some of your players but I want to thank you for uh, your leadership and really getting the best and setting goals for these young people and really being a big impact in their lives so thank you thank you for that uh, announcement from High Adventure and uh, past president Peter Sheris I understand you have a special message to share with us something to celebrate or something like that Peter. Thank you, President Sess. Yes, uh, I do uh, have a special message. Uh, my wife, Astrid, and I shared our 50th wedding anniversary about a week or so ago. And uh, so I want to ring the bell in honor of my friend and my lover, uh, my wife, Astrid Lacides. All right. Uh, let me ring the bell for you as well, for Sess, for Astrid. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Sess. Uh, anyone that wants to uh, uh, ring the bell for her and uh, Peter as well, uh, they can uh, enter it in the chat and we'll get to it later in the meeting. Uh, Rotary Foundation Chair, Leanne Alameda. I understand we have some awards we need to give out. Yes, thank you, President Sess. I'm Leanne and I'm a member of the Oakland Rotary Foundation Committee. Uh, last year, our club was number one in annual giving to the Rotary Foundation in the district. And today we want to recognize several members that generously contributed. Their donations provided the means to fund life-changing projects, both here at home and internationally. Named after Rotary's founder, Paul Harris, a Paul Harris Fellow is awarded as a recognition of a commitment to peace and for a better life for people around the world. A Paul Harris Fellow is presented to members making an accumulated contribution of $1,000 and each $1,000 thereafter is recognized, which is the case with today's awardees. Because of these members, we move closer to a world of peace and goodwill. Let's take this moment to honor their dedication to service above self. I'll now turn it back to you, President Sess, to present the awards. All right, first one that we'll present the award to is Daniel Ma, Danny Ma. Uh, many of you know Danny. He gets, uh, he runs our business development chair. Uh, he was recognized, I think, as the uh, chair of the district uh, for last year. 
Anyway, he has a Paul Harris Fellow plus three. I think we've sent all of those uh, awards out to the individuals. Do we have Danny on site? Yeah, there's Danny. All right. I want to show him that. Congratulations, Danny. Thank you, sir. All right. Then we have Keith Guerin. He has a Paul Harris Fellow number plus five. Where's uh, Keith? Uh, I think we need to highlight Keith. He's uh, uh, still on the ORE Trust, uh, Oakland Rory Endowment Trustee, I believe, or he had been for many years. Uh, firm, firm committed to our causes that we have here uh, for Rotary. Robert Kidd is a Paul Harris Fellow plus six. Uh, past President Robert Kidd, I should say. And they mentioned as well, he's involved with the Higher Venture Committee. Uh, Robert Rayborn, pa Paul Harris Fellow number five. He's a BART board member, and I believe you had a few words to say for us today, too. Is that right, Robert? Certainly. Thank you, President Sess. And I want to express thanks to the dedicated volunteers like Joe Garalka and Leanne Alameda on the Rotary Foundation Committee and to the other six foundation donors with me today. Over $4 billion has been raised by the Rotary Foundation over the past century. Without your service and support, multiplied by thousands of others worldwide, the Foundation would not be able to sustain the efforts necessary to eradicate wild polio in the African continent, as was recently reported. My appeal to Oakland Rotary is to please continue this beneficial work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert. And then next is Sean Marks. He's a Paul Harris Fellow plus three. And I believe he has something to say as well. Thank you, President Sass. I'm Sean, past President Sean Marks coming to you from Fantasy Island. <laughs> and uh, I historically have mostly given to our endowment and to our local projects. But over the last five years or so, uh, I've increased my giving to the Rotary Foundation really for three reasons. The first is I've gotten involved in some of the projects around the world and gone on site and seen just the amazing things that Rotary does on every continent around the world. The second is when we give money to the Rotary Foundation, we get matching dollars back. So we can leverage a dollar of our donation and get as much as $2.50 back for these projects. And then the third is it's been a great opportunity to collaborate with Rotary Clubs around the world and to get to know other Rotarians around the world. So I want to encourage everyone to consider giving to TRF this year. And I also want to consider, I also want to encourage everyone to consider joining our World Community Service Committee, where we get to spend the dollars that we get from Rotary International. Thank you, Sess. Thank you, Leanne, and have a uh, Great and safe day. Thank you, Sean. And then we have two more that we have to award. Steve Nichols, Paul Harris Fellow plus three. So fellow board member. Let's see, can we uh, spotlight him? There he is, Steve. He uh, serves on the board with, with me and a uh, very gracious uh, person to you. We thank you for giving to Rotary Foundation again. And Tom Freeman, Paul Harris Fellow Plus seven, plus wow. seven. That's amazing. Uh, long time member. Uh, where's uh, do we have Tom Freeman here today? Tom Freeman. Can we spotlight him? Is he here? President says this is Tom. All I'm right. Up in, up I understand you was up in Sacramento now. I don't recognize you though for a long time member, but has just recently moved to Sacramento. Thank you so much for your contribution to the uh, Rotary Foundation and Paul Harris okay. Fellow number seven plus seven that you will receive. Thank you. All right. Wow, that was a lot. We got uh, uh, past President Peter. Uh, I think you're next up, uh, supposed to update us on the Homeless Committee update. And I think that's going to be the last thing we do. We're not going to do 
breakout sessions today because we went over. Uh, Pat oh, Peter. Uh, Pat yes, President. President Sess. So I'm happy to report that uh, we have had around 60 of our members uh, volunteer this year to join the Homeless Task Force. And uh, we are uh, actively proceeding on a number of, uh, pro of proposals. One is a proposal that's being uh, coordinated by David Stein and by CJ. Working with Beyond Emancipation, they are in the process of trying to purchase a piece of property for uh, the uh, recently emancipated folks some of whom, many of whom actually ha have children of their own. And uh, they are seeking some expertise within the club to help Beyond Emancipation actually complete this transaction. The second uh, project that's underway, which I will show is, for me it's backwards, but the Oakland Community Neighborhood Home and Success and safety. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a very ambitious project that is being coordinated by um, uh, uh, a number of our members, including John Klassen, who is uh, sort of the leader of this. We have a couple of new members, David Nave and Lou Rigali. They are in the process right now of looking for city or county property upon which there can be put a kibbutz style a village of, uh, of, of FEMA provided trailer homes. These uh, homes will be, uh, in, will primarily be oriented towards families who are extremely poor, families who have been in a shelter and who have undergone services and are ready to move on to a, uh, their own, a more independent a living situation. This is a big project. There are a number of other Rotarians on the committee who have volunteered to do uh, some of the political work. They have uh, also uh, volunteered to help with the budgeting. Uh, we are considering doing a global grant here in Oakland through the uh, Rotary Foundation uh, to try and support this. And, uh, and there, that is actively proceeding. Finally, I would say that the committee is open to additional proposals. I received an email from Tom Lamone here recently, just the last couple of days that I haven't talked to him about. He's interested in actually trying to develop ADUs within Oakland, alternate, alternate living units on people's, in people's prop, uh, yards uh, that can improve the housing supply. And we are open to hearing from other Rotarians who are interested in, uh, in, in other projects to help this problem. So uh, there'll be a general meeting coming up probably in the next couple of weeks where we will be talking about these in more detail. Thank you so much, Vice President Peter. Uh, CJ, could you introduce our speaker for the day? Somebody got to me. There we go. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, President Sass. Well, Netflix's Emmy-nominated documentary series, Last Chance You, recently returned for season five to provide an authentic look at the junior college football program at our own Laney College. The city itself, and more precisely, its gentrification, is a key character. At the center of the series is charismatic coach John Beam, a fixture in Oakland football for 40 years, go Titans, who cares about winning, but even more about the futures of the team's resilient young men whose life challenges are extreme. A proud Oaklander, coach lives right up the street from Fairyland, attended the first five years of festival at the lake, and learned to love quick ways when he taught at Havens Court Junior High. Please help me welcome an incredible youth mentor who demonstrates that for so many, Laney is the best chance, not the last chance, John Beam. Great, thank you guys. I appreciate you all having me today. I learned something new today about Labor Day. I always thought Labor Day was the start of football season <laughs> until this year. This is the first Labor Day I have not been coaching in 38 years. The last time I didn't coach on Labor Day was a year I got married to my wife. 
and I psyched her because I didn't coach that year and she thought that every Labor Day we could always have a nice uh, anniversary getaway but we've been practicing every year since then until p pandemic so thank you very much um, I don't live by Freyland anymore that was my first apartment when I moved into Oakland in 1980 81 from San Diego I lived right there by Fairyland and I got to see the lake transform Ooh, ooh. We can't hear you, John. It don't look like much. I'm in on sewed, I'm sorry. But when we sew them together and we put them together and make they make this beautiful tapestry. And that's what Oakland means to me. Because it's made up of all of us. And and it's the beauty of it that we all bring. Maybe not by itself, but when you join them together. Um, when we did Last Chance You, a lot of people asked, were you crazy to do it? And I wanted to do it because I wanted to show that you could coach a different way. Number one, I chose not to leave Oakland. I've been here for coaching for 40 years of coaching, but 38 here in Oakland. I didn't need to go anywhere else. I went from Skyline for 22 years, and now this is my 17th year at Laney. There's so much right here, you don't have to go anywhere else. You can make a difference in your community. You can make an impact. But as much of an impact that people say I make to this community, this community has made an impact to me, just like you do in the Rotary, um, the giving that you all give. It's not so much about the taking, but the giving that is so important. But people looked at the show. I also wanted people to see that in the other four episodes, the, the JCs that were featured were in Mississippi and in Kansas, where there, their players get scholarships. So they have dorms, they have meal plans. And most of those players that they feature, what, what they call last chance, you were what bounce backs. They were at a four-year school and had ran into some type of difficulty and been asked to leave. And so they came back to try to regenerate themselves, re-image themselves at a community college. But at Laney, it's different. We don't have that. That's why I say best chance you. And sometimes I say you, and I don't mean the you as in a university, like in the University of Miami, I mean you and yourself. We can help you become a better you. Laney has a phenomenal group of, of professional educators that really work to make differences in people's lives. Our student services are unbelievable to provide the help that many of them need. But the difference is just in the short time I've been at Laney of 17 years, the obstacles in front of our students are becoming bigger and bigger food insecurities, housing insecurities, are everyday things. And in the, mo in the show, Last Chance You, you got to see it. We had a young man that was living in a car. He you know, was estranged from his family, didn't have a place to live. And so he's working at Wingstop at night to make some money. He had work study and financial aid at Laney and try to cobble together a way to survive. Well, you can't live and afford an apartment. You can't get first and last month's rent when you live that way. And so he had to live in his car at times. Showed another young man, new, a Samoan young, young fellow who got married early, got, his girlfriend got pregnant. They decided to get married. And as he tries to figure out, navigate his life with a wife and now two children, working at Walmart as a greeter at minimum wage wasn't really going to make a difference for him. So we had recruited him before all this, and he came back to Laney. And now he has a full Division I scholarship. And so he has an opportunity to make his life better for him, not only himself, but his wife and two kids. In today's age, and we talk about it, I heard you guys talk about mental health. I've been saying this for 40 years. And lately, the term PTSD, which we talk about from our military, I've been seeing it in the Oakland schools for at least 20 years that I've been teaching. I've been, you know, I was at Skyline for 22. But the, the violence and the struggles that our young people see every day is for real. And how it affects them is for real. Mental health is an issue that is going to hit us across the board, and it has hit us. And we're going to see even more with this pandemic. When Michelle Obama talks about she has low-grade depression, 
because of what's going on in this country with the pandemic, social injustice, systematic racism. It's a true statement. And this is a woman who has everything going for her, right? Has all this help that she could possibly have. And still yet she feels this way. How do you think our young people feel right now? How do you think they're dealing with it? And these are the things that I think that are not being addressed. I was on a forum last week. I think it's the East Bay Economic Advisory Group or something with the, uh, a person from the Oakland A's and an assistant AD from Cal. They were talking about how they were mitigating and working through COVID to help get their, their players back and the A's are playing. And so they asked me, like, so what's Laney doing to get back? And I kind of laughed. The rotten Bruce. We to help them at home, you know, workouts, uh, eye watches and ropes and things. We don't have money to send anything home. As they make their plan to come back and they start working out, they're testing their athletes. The A's test every other day. A test costs $120. And then you have to get it back within 24 hours or 48 hours at the most. Well, what test would a a kid from Oakland get or a, a kid at Laney get they can't they don't have health insurance so they get a test at the roots or Allen Temple a free test if they're lucky how long does that test get back a week two weeks how can we keep people safe and then the A's are able to bubble their athletes either in hotels or they have their own homes at Cal, they have dorms that they set aside to, to um, social bubble. Our young people ride public transportation. 80% of them ride public transportation. How are they going to social bubble? And then when they go home, they live in a multi-generational household mainly, or a lot of them. And when you live in a multi-level ho uh, generational house, my 18 to 20 year old will probably be asymptomatic won't even know that they have COVID. But when they walk into the house and they're with their grandmother or their grandfather or aunt or uncle or a cousin or an auntie who already probably don't have health benefits or able to use the healthcare system, access to it, who now becomes the most vulnerable? So those are the things that we're grappling with every day. At the same time, I know my athletes need to come back because of their mental health. They are struggling. These young men need routine, they need discipline, they need a, a structured environment. But they don't have it right now with COVID. And so I'm working every day you know, with my action team to provide a safe way to come back, at least to condition. And I still run into some um, pushback from some people in administration. And I, and I know we worry about the things I just said about, about taking COVID home, but I'm worried about these young people because of their mental health. And for many of them, they're now deciding, should they continue being at school? Remember, these are young people who have been told they don't belong in school. They don't look like the normal college student. And so, and it's not easy for them. And so when they go to school, and they see roadblocks, it just validates what people have told them their whole life. I was talking to one of my former players this weekend and Marvell spent 10 years in the NFL. 10 years in the NFL, he has two Super Bowl rings. At one time, he's one of the highest paid people in the NFL and all of that. And he was talking about growing up that how people had told him all his life that he wasn't going to be shit. He couldn't do anything. He was just going to end out in jail like his father. And now in his forties, he's a successful father, successful husband, and he's had a successful career. And more importantly, he has a degree from Arizona state. And that happened because someone believed in him and someone gave him structure in his life. And those are the things I think we need to, to concentrate on. I'm not sure what else you guys want me to talk about. I could talk forever. So 
there's any directions that you want me to go, we can talk about so social injustice. I'm glad to talk about that. Is that where you, you know, we okay? You want to hear my opinion on it? <laughs> I'm glad to. Seth, I mean, you tell me. You're the president. You can do whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, we can start to take questions from you if uh, uh, we can uh, set up the uh, chat line. Okay. So I think uh, you're watching the chat line to see if anybody has any questions, but you go on and continue to talk. Okay. Let me know. So when we talk about um, social injustice right now and the police defund the police, I don't know if that I'm a really big about defunding police or reprioritizing how the funds are spent. I work with a number of Oakland police officers, right? I've always had them on my staff at Skyline and at Laney. The reason I did it was twofold. One, they can coach, right? They wanna get back to the community. Two, is there human beings that just have a job with a blue uniform? And so when they show up in their shorts, whether it's Skyline t-shirt or Laney t-shirt, the young men only see a coach that's here to help them. They don't see a blue shield or a blue line. And they get to know each other. And for police officers, I think what they get to do is they get to know young people and not see a guy with sagging pants or dreads or gold teeth or tats. And they get to start to see that they have commonalities, that they grew up in the same type of environment or the same type of home life. And that they have the same goals that they're trying to achieve. And all of a sudden, instead of worrying about differences, they're embracing the common things they have together. So for me, if we could find a different way to police and to also have, you know, social workers. On the show at Last Chance U, you'll notice that I have a social worker in my athletic department, a young woman that I met Years ago, as a high schooler that played basketball at San Lorenzo with a good friend of mine was her coach. She played against my daughter. And now she's a social worker at Kaiser, but she wanted to do more and get a certificate on social work for student athletes or for athletes, athletic social work. And so we have her there to help. But Perry, can you just see a call where a police officer showed up with a social worker as well? Wouldn't that be a different dynamic? Or how about this one? Think about this for a minute, because I grew up in San Diego, right? When I grew up, the guy down the street that coached my Little League team, who I went to school with his son, was actually a police officer. If more police officers came from our community, would that change the outlook? Would that change the dynamics? I had ability to have one of the guys on my staff was a captain at OPD. He said, coach, you always got these great ideas. Tell me what you do about policing. How would you change it? And I said, Carlos, get them out of their cars. Why are they always in cars? Walk around. Walk around and meet people in the neighborhood. You know, go double jumps with them. If they get, hold the ropes. Turn the ropes for a while. You know, be something different. Because the only interaction that they ever have with folks in the neighborhood are negative typically change the dynamics. So those are the things that I see that can help flip the script. But I think that football, sports in general, band, these type of activities bring people from different walks of life. And again, I think people start to see similarities versus differences. Too many times we're so much pointing on what's different about somebody and not what's similar. On my field and on my team, 18, 19, 20-year-old kids where they come from Livermore or Pleasanton or they come from West Oakland or from Brookfield, they're there for the same thing, to earn a championship, earn a scholarship, to make themselves better, to compete. That's what brings them together. They don't care the difference. And then they start to hang out and they start to blend. And all of a sudden, we have a cohesive team. And that's why in 2018, we won the state and national championship. Because this group of people blended and became one. We always talk about family. That's a great family right there. So I don't know if you have questions. Yeah, yeah we do. We got, we're going to ask you the questions now. Susie's okay. going to run those for us. 
What did you say, right. Susie? Thank you, um, President Sess. So, Coach Bean, the first questions um, I'm going to combine to Stephanie Casenza and David Stein want to know how you support your athletes at Laney. Are there scholarships available? So, it's so funny, and that's a great question, right? I'm in a battle all the time with the three C2A. It's like the NCAA. These organizations would govern us were built by people that you know, grew up in the 60s and 50s that think all these kids are middle class and have money. So we can't give them scholarships because it would be a violation. And so we have to work around the rules. Like my assistant has, goes by as a bunch of cup of noodles in case of a cup of noodles and just happens to leave them on her counter. So if someone's hungry, they can grab cup of noodles. <laughs> um, we try to find a way to buy some books and just leave them on the counter so kids can borrow them as long as they put them back on the books. But we can't on the counter, but we can't say we gave them to you because you earned it as a scholarship. But we work with our foundation, the Peralta Foundation, Lanice Jones, to try to help find ways to mitigate those situations. But mainly, they're on their own dime. And that's why you see kids working at Wingstop. At, so he works, goes to practice, goes to school all day. And remember, most of our football players take 18 units a semester. They practice on the field. They go home. He goes, works at Wingstop from 8 to 12 to make a few dollars at a $12 an hour job and then go home and try to sleep. In his case, he was sleeping in his car, get back up, drive back into Oakland and start the process again. And in his case, we actually found housing for him in Oakland, but his job was in Antioch where he went to high school. And so he, he didn't want to lose that simple job by even having a place in Oakland to live. So that's some of the tra travesties that we have. Mm -hmm. Next question. Thank you. So the next question, Tom Limon and Bob Ardy have similar questions about coaching style and um, how you provide an influence um, in over the past 40 years. What's the difference between the way people want to be coached and the way you actually do coach? And well, yeah, I, I don't ask them how they want to be coached. How about that? <laughs> so I don't, you know, that part I don't ask. I think I coach hard, but I love just as hard. Right. There's a thing that comes out in the clip of Last Chance You, the trailer, where I say we have to believe in them so they can believe in themselves. And that's something I always believe in. I think that you can raise the bar as high as you want. Young people want challenges. They also want discipline. They want to know consistency. And I tell this story to everybody. When I first started coaching in Oakland in 82, you know, it changed. And people said, well, you know, you're coaching in this black community. You're not black. How does it work? And I go, well, why would it be different coaching in a black community than a white community? Right. Should be the same. Right. But okay, I get it. And I said, the kids don't see color. What they see is that, will I show up when I say I will, will I be there every day? Will I show up at three o'clock in the morning when you called me because your mom just committed suicide or tried to, and you needed help? Did I show up and drive down to the eighties and be there. Did I go to the church event, the pancake feed down when, when I taught at Havens Court when I was down at the, by the village? And I did. My wife and I were part of the community. Where are we at? You know, I, 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 taught by, I taught at Frick. I lived right there by Frick. And the kids would come by and pick me up on the way to school because I'd open up the gym early if you had a 3.0 or better. So again, I created a standard and I kept it high. But I also made sure that if they fell, I would pick them up again, and then we would try it again together. I would always stand next to them to help them. And if they needed a boost, I would be behind them and help lift them. I think that's my style, but I am hard on them. I demand a lot. OK, so Gary Flaxman says, Coach B, my mentee, won his high school state championship on your field two years ago. He has been blessed by getting to know Darius Wilkerson regarding internships. What former players are giving back? You know what? My goal used to be, when I and it still is, I tell the kids, right? I don't need anything from you. Like, coach, when I make it to the NFL, I'm going to buy you a car. I don't need your car. I'll buy my own car, right? But what I need you to do is pick somebody up and help the next generation. So Jarris has done that. Kevin Parker has done that. Adam has done that. You know, Marvell has done that. I think it's always important that the generation gives back and help lift the next group up. And they can do it as simply as just being there and telling their story, their life story, right? And that story can be the bad part that happened in your life, as well as the good parts that happened in your life. We can learn from everything. 
And so that's what I think is phenomenal, right? Is that the kids that I've coached have come back and for whatever reason, and Jairus is a prime example, like they just really believe. And when we talked about it, Skyline, Titan Pride. Now at Laney, we talk about Laney Built, right? They really believe in it. And I didn't get it, you know, like, okay, I thought I kind of coined it like kind of a, you know, hokey thing. But the kids really believe in it. And we would make these shirts up. And it would be amazing when I would go to an NFL game or a college game and I, the, I'd see the kids after the game and they've got this old Laney sh- or Skyline shirt that says Titan Pride on their, underneath their shoulder pads. They're playing for Cal, they're playing for Oregon, or they're playing in the NFL. And that meant so much to them because it kind of carried um, the, the, the energy of all the other players they played with. So um, I just love that those G and those guys give back all the time. Great, thank you. So one more question, Sam Miller. What can Rotary do to help your program? Well, number one, I think is always is that, you know, whatever the community can do to help, jobs, food, whatever you think, right? Um, those are always good things. Mentorships. We just got the A's just offered us 10 mentorships for all our student athletes. Like I said, we're, we're part of the Peralta Foundation, and so we have a 40. 403C, whatever, one of those numbers, 503C, yes, and, uh, and we, you know, you can donate there, and we can, you know, so we get food and different things to, to our players, but let me just say this, right, one of the things I firmly believe is this, right, you can give someone a, a fish, right, and they can eat, or you can teach them to fish so they can eat forever, and I, I firmly believe in that as well, right, is, is when they come back from college, or when they even hear, you know, having a place where someone will mentor them and give them that first job to give them the skills, right? So they can to, to, to flourish, right? And I look at it right now and I don't know if Jairus is here or not, but Jairus came back after playing successfully in the NFL and then went and got his master's through his MBA. And I introduced him to another ex-player who then now they, they've formed a partnership, right? They didn't know each other, but what it was is just taking, you know, me opening the door saying, hi, meet each other and me leaving. And then they both then, came up with some ideas but it's the idea that you you know teach folks to fish right and also understand that this is so important right it truly does take a village to raise someone and it means not only raising them to be grown-ups but raising their awareness of what's going on in life every day in Oakland all of us can continue to raise the awareness of each other about what's happening when we see the discrepancies that are happening with social justice and systematic racism that is occurring in this country and in this city we need to be aware of it and not just poo poo it but understand that change is coming and be a part of change for me it's education right i think education helps change well, Coach Bean, we've, we've got a few people on, uh, on the line who said they used to play for you. <laughs> so uh, do we have a, a, a Rod Edwards? Do you want to ask uh, Coach a question? Coach Bean is Rod Edwards. You would probably know me as Edwards. Let's go. Edwards, let's go, let's go baby. That's it. <laughs> let's go. Um, How are you? What are you doing these days? <laughs> um, I wanted to, uh, I'm living in Los Angeles. Uh, my mother, uh, Joyce Mack, is on the uh, road, part of Rotary, and she called me okay. this morning and said that uh, you were going to be on the uh, Rotary call and asked me that I want to join. And so I said, of course, of course. <laughs> so to what you just said, uh, first and foremost, it's, uh, for those who don't know, it's actually the um, 36th the anniversary of uh, the 10 and 0 Titans team. And so I pulled this out for you. <laughs> See that? Oh, you disappeared. I can't find you. See yeah, that? Where's this picture? Uh, it's not the center. I can't see it. Uh, he's got a skyline jersey. <laughs> OK, there you go, baby. I'm fired up. <laughs> And um, that actually got me on, somehow it got me on the cover of the, the Peach uh, Oakland Tribune sports. Yeah, Central. reach for the uh, Peach, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, th- I think in the grander scheme that um, hats off and, and, and shout out to you for, for continuing to do what you do and continuing to instill um, Titan pride and, and, and 
uh, Laney Pride and, and, and everyone that, that comes through your program. And, um, you know, appreciate all the, 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 the other yeah, practices were hard at the time, but they most certainly pay off in the long run. Well, I can tell. It looks like you're in the music business, huh? <laughs> yeah. I've had a music, I had a 20-plus a year uh, career in the music industry, so. And that's another gem that what Oakland produces, right? People don't understand how talented and how special this city is, man. My hat's off to you, brother. Keep it up. No worries, um, no worries. <laughs> let's make sure we stay in touch. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, John Lee, for being our speaker today. Thank you very much. I appreciate all you all do. Thank you. Inspirational discussion about what football can do or what the coach can do for you in our community here. Uh, this year, our club is making a homeless crisis in Oakland a priority. To that end, it is our gift to you for being our speaker for today. In your honor, we are making a donation to support our unhoused residents in Oakland. Additionally, we would like to give you a centennial book, which documents 100 years of service and friendship in the third oldest club in the Rotary world, Oakland number Thank two. you. Written by our own, very own Rotarian, Linda Hamilton. Now, uh, so thank you so much, John. Uh, we're, we're, we might have you back sometime, <laughs> who knows? Um, Rotarian Anne Marie, Anne Marie Jones, do we have any bell ringers out there? Uh, yes, we do. We have quite a few bell ringers. We have several generous Rotarians. We'll start with Alita Scola, our, our meeting sponsor today. And you rang the bell, President Sess. Yes. We had Peter Sherris, Fred Morse, Keith Iriarte, Joe Garalka, Wise Allen and our own Joycey Mack is ringing not once, but twice. Once for the coach and once for her son. All right. That sounds like 10, I heard. Ah, uh, and, jo and Georgia Richardson. Uh, that, that makes 11. <laughs> Excellent. There we go. 11 bell ringers out, out today. Uh, Rotarian Kimberly Miller, will you tell us about the very special speaker we'll have next week? I'd be more than happy to. Thank you, President Sess. Next week, Rotarians, we will have a special look inside the Oakland Museum of California. No, not the Black Lives Matters mural project or the Dorothea Lang Digital Archive exhibit or the amazing exterior renovation by MacArthur genius Walter Hood. No, no, no. We will be hearing from Lori Fogarty, director and CEO of MCA, about the work that she's been leading for a few years at the museum, real work to execute real equitable change. Um, she and the museum and staff have had a real commitment to the process of equity and inclusion and accessibility. And she is someone who knows what it takes to work at every level of the institution from board to staff to your constituency to really execute that change. And the process is long and really never ending pursuit to improve. Lori will share um, what she has been learning with OMCA and that they have had made real progress. But I think even more importantly, she'll share with us how much work still remains. Really excited for that. Thank you, President Sess. Sounds exciting. We can't wait till next week. Thank you, Kimberly, for that introduction. And uh, thank you, Tommy, for the thought for the day. Uh, thank you, Keith, for educating us on Labor Day. Thank you, Joe and Leanne, for recognizing our Paul Harris fellows. And thank you, Peter, for keeping us abreast about the homeless efforts. Thank you, CJ, for introducing our speaker. And finally, a big thank you for Lita Scola for sponsoring this meeting, for all your framing and art <laughs> needs. And, and Stephanie Casenza, thank you for being a client. I forgot you. <laughs> all right, you got Stephanie in there too. All right. <laughs> uh, Pat, before I uh, wrap up this meeting, do we have any more bell rings? Pat, hello. I Sorry, guess. sis. I think we got them all. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you so much. So I'd like to end this meeting as usual. And that's the way it went at the 5307th club meeting 
on September 3rd, 2020 at Oakland Rotary Number 3, the third oldest Rotary Club in the Rotary world. Everybody, remember, Rotary opens opportunities for service above self. And for now, the meeting of Rotary Club of Oakland is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>